Now let's take a look at the local context analysis. In the previous lecture, we talked about the local clustering technique, uh, which are based on the set of document retrieve for a query. Now we are looking at another, another approach that is to search for terms correlation in the whole document. So we are talking about the whole document and not only the document retrieve for a particular query. So this is sometimes called global technique in which we are looking at building tizers that encodes term relationship in the whole collection. So we are looking at the whole collection here. And also the term are treated as concept and the Tizerus is viewed as a concept relationship structure. Um, um, in this case, we are looking at a concept that consists of more than one term. So, um, in building the Tizerus, we consider the use of small context, how the, the term being used, and also the phrase structure uh, that um, a phrase may, may consist of one, two, or three terms at the same time. Local context analysis is an approach that combines both global and local analysis. So it apply a noun group uh, that consists of single noun, two nouns, or three adjacent nouns in the text. So a noun is a, is a word used to name a person, animal, place, things, and abstract idea. And then what we do, we will select the uh, noun groups from the top rank document. And they are considered as document concept. But in local context analysis, we are looking at passages instead of document. So we will break the document into few passages. Um, for example, um, 100 words per pa passage. Now we look at the three steps on how local context analysis can be done. So in the first one, we retrieve the top n rank passages using the original query. So for instance, if we have query QAB, and then we have retrieve relevant document, a few relevant document, example like this. So what we will do, we will break them into passages. So this one, in this example, we have five words per passage. And then we will reorder them based on the ranking um, by measuring the similarity between the passage with the query. And then from there, we can pick any N top passage. So in this case, we use five top rank passages. And then we can proceed to the next step. The second step involves computing these similarity between the query and the concept that exists in that passage. So for example, um, given the top five passages here, so I want to compute the similarity between the queue and also the concept that exists in each of the passages that we have. So we have this formula. So basically, this one will compute the correlation between the concept and also the keyword that we have in the key, in the query. This is similar to the term term correlation matrix, and this is basically the IDF for the um, keyword one. This is the IDF for the concept. And it is computed based on N, which is the number of passages in the collection. Okay. And, and NP 
PI referring to the number of passages containing keyword I and NPC referring to the number of passages containing the concept C. So, um, since our query consists of A and B from the previous slide, if I go back to, so our query here is A and B. So, we are looking at two keywords here, A and B. So, we need to compute um, these two. The first one will correspond to term A, and the second one will correspond to term B. Okay? So, we will look into here. So, um, basically, this one is sigma. So, log n. So, we have log 5 because we have 5 top passages. And then, we find IDFC. And then, we have the IDFA. So, we will multiply them together. So, that is the similarity for um, query and also the concept C. And then the last stage is for the top M ring concept. So, based, based on this, based on the similarity Q and C uh, added to the original query. So we we have um, suppose that we have the ranking of top M concept uh, D C E F. So we will put a weightage here. So this is the weightage assigned to each one each one of them. So the I referring to uh, position of C in the concept. So this is rank number one, two, three, and four, and M referring to number of concept to be added to Q. So we can get this value. And then if we have a query A, B, so we add this D, C, E, F, and then we can form the new weightage for the new query. Okay, um, that's all. So we will continue the next lecture. Lecture number seven.